Okay, so we've done our polar alignment. And so now we can connect up some other pieces of gear we're going to need and go do some imaging. So I'm going to go to my Astro folder here and start up Backyard EOS. I have two instances here for doing two cameras. Don't let that confuse you for now. One camera. Okay, and connect. Okay, so we've connected to our camera. Now you you may have you know get the dialogue here about which driver to use you can disable that once you know which one you're using based on the model of your camera that's why that didn't come up so backyard EOS is connected and now we are going to start Astro Tortilla which uses backyard EOS So we connect to our ASCOM telescope, again, HEQ56. You don't need to do properties or anything, just click on OK. And once that it sees your tracking, you can click on this bottom box here, which will select all three, because this is what we want to do. We want our scope to sync, re-slew, and repeat until we're within one arc minute of the target. I have set up Backyard EOS and already figured out the settings. Well, that's a good point. Actually, this is probably not for this scope. Let's look and see what settings we have here. Uh, 8 inch, 6 inch RC, no plots. That is probably what we want. Uh, what I can do here is just hedge my bets here. I'll just go ahead and make this like 0 0.5 as a scale minimum to 1.5 and then it'll figure it out on its own. Okay. So, Astro Tortilla is set up. So we've got, we already had PHD2 set up. So we've got everything we need now to go do some imaging. So now that we've got both Astro Tortilla and Backyard EOS set up, we do need to go and find a bright star to focus on. to target. See, Vega, yeah, maybe as long as I'm going to be on this side of things, I could just go to Vega. It's the brighter the star, the better for your uh, focusing using live view and backyard EOS, so... Let me just jump down here. Slow complete. Once again, I'm not in exactly the right position for this target. landscape. But Slow complete. Okay, so. I don't know how horribly out of focus we are, so before we can plate solve, we got to get close. So let's just take a 10 second exposure at ISO. Twelve hundred and eighty. Take a preview. 
and hopefully we'll have some stars in the frame and we'll see some donuts. I can actually see here, we were pretty far out. You can see some faint, faint donuts. I don't know if you can see it on the video. And we'll get some brighter ones this time. It'll be easier to... There are some bright donuts. All right. And you can see my collimations off a little bit too, but that's for another video. So I'm gonna guess at which direction to turn the focuser because I don't know which side of focus we're on. So I've turned it quite a bit and we'll do another preview and we'll see if the donuts get bigger or smaller. got smaller, but I need to go quite a bit more. Okay. Hey, we're getting close. Almost there. We just want estimates, you know, get some pinpoint stars for Astro Tortilla to work with. Hopefully this will be it here. Yeah. Let's see how it does with that. So we tell it to capture and solve, so it, it um, the planetarium program told the mount where to point, and so what we're going to do now is figure out if we're really pointed there or not, and each time it will take an exposure, it will figure out where in the sky that exposure is actually pointing at, and then it will correct the model in EQMOD and the planetarium. Well, in EQMOD, actually. Okay, so it's solving. Here it's going to tell us how many stars it saw. 3,838. And we got a solve. Say, slew into target. So it made a sync point in EQ mod, and now it's recentering, it's moving the mount. Slew complete. And with any luck, this exposure will have a big bright star right in the middle of it. And there it is. All right, so I'm gonna let that, it may slew one or two more times, getting even more accurate, but while that's happening, I'm gonna walk over and get my focus mask. I could abort this at this point. I mean, that we don't have to be pointed exactly at that star, it just needs to be in the frame somewhere. I'll let it go one more time here.
the other thing that's going to happen here, well, one reason not to abort it, I guess, is when it's done, hopefully it'll say solved here. Yeah, solved in 34 seconds. So you'll see here that it put in the correct numbers. Now it, it'll make subsequent solves quicker put in the correct numbers for this exact FOV that I'm imaging at so I'm just going to go ahead and save those over the top of whatever that was I had before 6 inch RC no plots okay now we're ready to do a live view focus with the Batonov mask here is my and you can almost see that here is my Batonov mask. Um, so I'm just going to set it on the scope. Like so. And in Backyard EOS we go to frame and focus. And here you see there's a white star. Now if this was over here or over here or something what you can do is unlock this box because we're gonna zoom in 5x here see like like that so we need that box to be around the star so you double click to unlock the box and then you move it where you want it and then you double click again to lock it. Okay, and so we're just going to go 5x, and I'm just going to, I guess the reticule is not in the way. If the reticule is in the way, you can eliminate that, and then all we're going to do is make that pattern with the Batonov mask. Let's see, this line here, we want halfway between these two diagonal lines. Now there's a bunch of stuff over here um, you know it, it's supposed ba uh, backyard EOS is supposed to figure out the where the lines are pointing and all that. And I, I've never found that very useful. I just do it by eye. You know so there it is and looks like the scene's not that great tonight but we are in focus, so come back to imaging. You don't want to leave it on frame and focus any longer than you have to because it heats up the camera sensor. So see here, before we did that, the camera sensor was 72 degrees. Let's go ahead and take another preview. Look how, you know, this is not very sharp looking. Let's see if we increase the focus and what happened to the camera temperature. So take another 10 second exposure. I've removed the Batonov mask. Although you can leave it on and take, you know, one to see kind of more accurately what how your focus is. Okay, much sharper picture, and you can see the camera temperature went up uh, quite a bit. There it went up. Uh, what is that? 16 degrees. That's why you want to minimize your time in live view. Now we should be all set to go take an image of an object so we need to acquire our object. So I was going to look at M31 so we're going to find it in Stellarium and then we're going to slew. Slewing to target. Comes the scope. Gonna go through Polaris and come over here. Slow complete. 